Welcome everyone to this session. We are looking at what we can do when we're separated from loved ones over the holidays, uh, looking at some of the losses that are in our lives at this time, and then some of the joys that we might be able to find in this season. So the first thing that we need to do when faced with loss or grief is to actually name the losses and get very particular and specific. So it's easy for us to say that 2020 is a horrible year. 2020 is going to be a miserable Christmas. It's going to be a, a terrible holiday season for me. And when we make a generalized statement like that, it's very difficult to deal with all of the fallout from that because we're not speaking more specifically about what it is that we're losing in this year. So the first thing and the most important thing to do with any source of grief or loss in your life is actually simply to name the losses and to get specific. So for us, it will be thinking about what will you miss this year in particular? You know, will it be the, the gathering for Christmas supper? Will it be games that your family plays in particular? Uh, will it be outdoor sites? Uh, will it be particular foods and traditions and church services or mosque services or temple services? Uh, who will you miss is also a big question as well. It's not just the what, but it's the who as well. So who will you miss around your dinner table this year? Who will you miss seeing at this particular time of the year that maybe you never see except once a year, it could be an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent. So name those things. And it could be cultural as well, uh, particularly for us out can. We want to start thinking about the Canadian things in particular that we miss at this time of the year. Uh, maybe it is the uh, ease of just, you know, stepping outside and going cross-country skiing. Uh, maybe it's snowboarding. Maybe it's just snow itself uh, and, you know, the amount of snow that we receive. So the first thing that I would say to do when you're trying to cope with uh, the grief and the losses that we have around 2020 and this holiday season, uh, and for so many of us, it's the physical distance uh, and the inability to get together with loved ones because of COVID restrictions. Not all of us are able to get home this year. Uh, some of us as military members and dependents have to stay back because we're mission essential or because we're part of a team and only one person can leave and get back to Canada. So name the things in particular that you will miss uh, because of the situation that we're in right now. So that's our starting point. Now what tends to happen with loss is that we start generally in our feeling center. Uh, so I feel sad. Um, I, I kind of know why I feel sad, but I know I feel particularly sad at this time of the year uh, because of all these things that are happening. So start with the feeling center and that's often where we go. And the feelings will often lead us into our behaviors, good or bad, as to how we respond to them. And then we go into the cycle as we start thinking through then, uh, you know, my response to my feelings, you know, this is what I did uh, when I was feeling really sad. Oh my goodness, I overindulged in chocolate. And why did I do that? I did that because of this overarching pandemic in my life right now. Uh, we can start anywhere on that cycle, and often people do, you know, they might start with their thoughts, their thoughts around COVID, and then that leads to the feelings, and then that leads to the behaviors, whether appropriate or inappropriate. Uh, but it usually starts with the thoughts or the feelings. So we can use emotion regulation skills in order to change our emotions in situations. And it's important to remember that our emotions are normal, and everyone experiences them, particularly when we're dealing with loss and struggling through grief in our life. Uh, sometimes, particularly when we have had persistent distressing experiences during our lives, we can emotionally react more often to situations. 
And learning some emotion regulation skills is the key to help us learn effectively to manage and change the way we feel and cope within those situations. So that, in effect, will help us to choose behaviors that are appropriate given the losses that are in our lives. Emotions, thoughts, and what we do or, or feel an urge to do, the behaviors are all linked, and they can become, like I said, part of a cycle, a vicious cycle. But changing one part of the cycle will help improve the situation and always help us to feel better. When we experience really strong negative emotions, it's easy to get caught up in the old pattern of using unhelpful and damaging coping strategies, such as abusing substances or self-harming or unhealthy eating habits. So we want to get out of that. And so here are some of the negative coping skills that often uh, come into play when we're dealing with excessive stress um, or excessive pain or excessive sadness and distress within our lives. So excessive worrying, uh, you know, worrying uh, in particular um, about all kinds of things, you know, the inability to see uh, aging parents, uh, the inability to connect with uh, children at this time of the year. Um, passivity or avoidance as well as another behavior. You know, I've heard a few people say, I'm just going to forget that it's Christmas this year and just treat it as another ordinary day. But I can tell you uh, it, it will seep through <laughs> no matter what you end up doing. Um, so that really isn't particularly helpful. Sometimes we set unrealistic expectations as well as a negative coping strategy. Well, you know, given what it, I'm dealing with right now, you know, I'm going to do something really, really large, magnanimous, but, you know, not be able to follow through on that. Um, drugs, alcohol use, um, being overly critical, uh, denying, like I said, what's going on. Angry outbursts can also be uh, symptomatic of excessive stress in your lives. Withdrawing, becoming isolated, uh, overeating, undereating and impulsivity as well. So impulsivity goes to the, uh, the quick behavior fix to, you know, an emotion that you might have, and that will link up with, uh, with drugs, alcohol, uh, overeating, undereating, things like that as well. So those are the negative coping skills, the places where we don't want to go. And we'll get into some more positive things in a moment. The first thing then after, I think, when you've named what it is your losses will be this year around this holiday season and the grief that you might be feeling. The first thing after that is to come to a place of radical acceptance. And what I mean by acceptance is simply the willingness to experience a situation as it is rather than how we want it to be. So sometimes we try to force things in life, you know, let me, let me put that um, square peg at a round hole, and we just can't this year. You know, this is where we're at, you know, and you have to understand each of your situations. I know across Europe, every country is different at this time of the year, and we all have different restrictions, and they're all unique to us. So we need to be able to understand uh, the situation that we're in and come to radically accept it. And that means turning your mind. Um, over and over and over again, uh, because I know for a while I thought, well, maybe I can go home at Christmas. Oh, no, I can't. I've, I know that I have to be on call. Um, however, I, I had thought, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go early January or maybe I'll go early December, but then I have to, you know, do the quarantine. So I've got to do two weeks in Canada and then I've got to do two weeks back here and I can't take that much time off work. Um, but it was going through my mind, well, maybe I could do this or maybe I could do that. But at the end, I thought, no, I really can't. It's unfair to the team. So you have to think about um, where you're at and radically accept uh, and, you know, try and stop that turning of your mind many, many times in a short space of time. So what radical acceptance looks like is looking at what you can control within your circumstances. Okay, this is 2020 the holiday season for me, and what does it mean for me? Who am I going to be with? Uh, what will I be doing in this period of leave? I know everyone will be taking a certain amount of leave um, in the course of this time period. So what, what is that time period going to actually look for me, and what am I capable or able to do? 
and knowing that the situation will not go on forever, definitely not, uh, in the same way in which it is today. Uh, so that, you know, we have to acknowledge within our hearts as well. And then keeping an open mind and heart, um, and we're going to get into that a little bit more in terms of creative expression. So a lot of acceptance is simply letting go of, um, of your particular <laughs> control and your mind turning to change it into something that you want it to be, but it can't. So some of the things that we can do to improve um, where we're at at this moment in time is using the word improve, which I love, um, as an acrostic. And so you can look at each letter as signifying something in particular. For, so for the I, imagery. Um, and I would put imagery together with, uh, with P, with prayer as well. So imagining, visualizing a safe place for yourself or meditating. Um, uh, doing some affirmations as well. So often in meditation, we'll find a place um, that is a safe place and we can go there within our mind. So you might, you know, take some time out and do some, some of that internal work. The M is finding meaning in the situation. And I know that's a real challenge because uh, often meaning is understood in hindsight, right? After we've been through something, then we go back and say, hmm, I learned an awful lot about myself within those six months in this area and in this area and in this area. However, um, if you're a person who likes to look at the big picture, um, then you're probably somebody who's already thinking about, okay, in the course of 2020, um, what kind of meaning uh, did I find in this situation? What, what did I find out about myself? You know, um, perhaps you're an extrovert uh, naturally, and then you've been forced into being an introvert <laughs> for the last six months uh, to a degree that has never been present in your life before. Um, what did you learn? What did you learn about introversion? If you're an introvert, you may have found that, oh, I actually really do need people in my life, and it does give me a certain amount of energy. And, you know, I, I need to... I know for myself, I, I don't do online grocery shop, shopping. I actually go to the grocery store because I do want to be around people at some point in my day because I live alone. So, you know, you will, you will necessarily find some meaning within this whole COVID existence as well. Uh, our relaxation, well, again, you know, finding the ways in which you can unwind from uh, the pandemic and the news and the stories and it may be, you know, uh, turning the television off, unwinding from social media and all those things for a while. You have to find your, your times to relax and what that looks like for you in particular as well. Uh, o is for one thing at a time. Do try and do one thing at a time. You know, we, we often stress ourselves out by trying to do a million different things at once, um, particularly over the holiday season. The V for vacation, well, all of us would really like to be somewhere other than our immediate geographic existence right now. Um, but that's not going to happen, right, um, for many of us for some time. So what does vacation look like uh, within a certain proximity of, um, of where you're living right now? You know, think about you know, things that you can do that are safe for you and your family. You know, can we, can we go hiking in some different areas? Um, can we do some sporting activities that are, you know, within the area? What does that look like for yourself? And you can do some imagining and visualizing as well. And do some goal setting as well, you know, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to think about next winter and, you know, where where myself, where my family might want to go on a holiday next winter. And then the E is for encouragement. So you want to encourage yourself as well in these times. And part of that is doing some positive and calming self-talk. And by that, I mean, you know, repeating to yourself. Even sometimes, I know it might sound a bit silly, but you can look in the mirror as well and say things to yourself like, you know, I am stressed, but my worries do not define me. You can look in that mirror and say, this is only a bad moment, Leslie, and bad moments will pass, just like the good ones. You can say, I am enough, 
and I will get through this. I am worthy. I am strong. I am upset, but I know that all of this will pass. You know, just some encouraging positive talk as you're moving through this situation. So some ideas around distraction as well are really significant because distraction helps us feel better by diverting our attention away from the distressing thoughts. So if you're approaching this season and you're getting more and more concerned about the number of distressing thoughts that you're having in terms of um, the heaviness that you feel, you know, about being apart from particular family members and friends that you dearly want to see and that you love. Um, start to think about things that are really going to grab your attention and keep you absorbed so that you're not spending hours upon hours in the day thinking about what it is that you're missing this Christmas. Um, and I, when I say that, I know that different things work for different people, so it's worth trying and experimenting and practicing um, many different things and things that really work for yourself um, a few times before you actually give up on it. So a lot of people will go to leisure activities and I know that a lot of people have told me when they have a lot of distressing thoughts, um, reading becomes very difficult for them because reading involves a lot of concentration. So for some people reading will work, for others it won't. Um, however, I know uh, one woman in particular told me that she can she can watch a movie though. She can watch a movie on Netflix and get totally absorbed in it and it'll take her away from distressing thoughts, but she can't read a book. Um, so that's what works for her. Uh, some people will do the mind games, the crosswords, the sudokus, those kinds of things where they just can really focus and get their mind into it. Um, for others, it's um, I've got to get outside, I've got to get my mind and my body moving at the same time, and so a hike or a long walk will do that. Getting out is really important, especially those of us who are in countries like the UK, for example, where um, we don't get a lot of sunlight. And uh, we need that, right? So even if it's a glimpse, and uh, for all of us, our days are much shorter here. You know, the um, the sun goes down at uh, 3.30 in Norway, I know, so um, we don't get a lot of sunlight, even if you do get it in the country that you're in, so you really almost have to time, you know, when you're going to get out, get outside, so, you know, if, um, if you're in the office all day, if you're in the house all day and then you think, oh, I need to go for a walk, but it's 4.30 and it's pitch dark, um, <laughs> you know, make sure you can, you can do something at noon hour or mid-morning or, you know, mid-afternoon so that you, you can get some of that sunlight. Uh, being creative is another thing uh, that is a really good distraction idea, uh, particularly if you're learning something entirely new as well, you know, something artistic, um, sewing, crocheting, painting, uh, drawing, there's all kinds of different woodworking things out there that you can learn. And there are so many Zoom sessions and uh, seminars right now that are given by very creative people throughout the world, um, many of them free, that you can get in on and get your own supplies and get yourself really immersed in something. So think through maybe what it is, something that you might want to do. Uh, Self-soothing activities are also really important for our hearts and our souls as well. Um, so I've talked about meditating, but you can do things like just soaking your feet. You know, you don't have to get into a full bath. Um, you can do things like trying a different meal, you know, creating something uh, very different for Christmas this year, maybe making um, a different dessert for yourself listening to some uplifting music as well. All of those things are really self-soothing. And I would want to emphasize music as well because music has a way of really lifting the soul. Uh, so that's a good thing to do too. And making contact with others. And I think most of us are aware and have used the different mediums to be in touch with family and friends uh, just as a necessity of being out can. So, 
you know, we know how to use WhatsApp and Skype and Zoom and all those different things, but, you know, we may want to be more particular at this time of the year because I know with my family, we scheduled a Zoom session for my sister's birthday and we all said, okay, we're going to need to do this <laughs> on Christmas Day or, you know, at some point over the holiday season. So my extended family, you know, we're going to choose a date where we can all get together because after I had finished that call where the majority of my family were on it, it was like, oh, that took a lot of heaviness off of my chest. It was so good to, to see everybody in the family and to talk to everybody, albeit briefly, but it was there. And again, positive self-talk, you know, keep saying encouraging things to yourself. Uh, even though it's repetitive, but you do need to know that you're going to get through this. It's not going to be the end of the world if the holiday season looks different this year. It's not going to last forever as well. So keep saying those kinds of messages to yourself as well. Lots of positive self-talk. Okay, so we've been we've been thinking pretty much in an adult framework right now, but we also have to think about how we can help children cope um, with some of the separation and losses that they'll be feeling. And perhaps you're an adult um, overseas here and you're separated from your children. You may be um, separated from nieces and nephews, young nieces and nephews. You may be separated from your adult age children right now from university age students um, if they're in different circumstances. So there could be lots of different separations that involve our children as well. And what kinds of things can we help our children with who maybe really desperately want to see their grandparents because that's what they do every Christmas and that's what you had planned in 2020. We're going to go home and, you know, we're, we're going to see grandma and grandpa and we're all going to be together as we are every year, but not this year. So how did the children deal with loss and grief as well? Again, you know, I would say start at the beginning and get them to name some of the things that they might miss this year that are going to be different. Um, and then to start talking about some of the, the coping skills for them. So there are things that you can do together to bridge the distance, and that's lots of activities and games that kids like playing. If they're youth, if they're older children, well, then you can do online gaming, you know, between countries. My son does it all the time with people all over the world. So there's all kinds of games out there for older youth and children. Uh, with younger children, of course, they, they prefer shorter, briefer interactions. And you can do puppet shows, you know. Um, the grandparents, you know, get them to be creative, you know. Put on a puppet show for your children over here. Um, start thinking about pen pals, you know, that they could um, maybe start up a project with uh, someone else here in Europe, another child here in Europe. Uh, do photo competitions. Um, look back over photos of past Christmases and then talk about, you know, some of the new traditions that you're going to make this year. So get creative. Um, brainstorm together, you know, between the generations within your family in order to help your children cope and to work through this this very different year. And then um, the last piece that I would say, and I, probably this is the most significant one in terms of changing the focus this year, is learning how to be grateful, um, given where we are at and some of the things that we're um, suffering through and enduring at this time of the year. So negative incidents have a greater impact on our brains. So that being the case, it means that it takes a lot of energy, but with that energy, we need to refocus. So there are different ways in which you can do that to think about gratitude because it will take a lot of the heaviness off of your heart. So one thing is creating gratitude lists. Uh, those of you who like writing um, and are okay with that, you can do a blog or a blog, you can do a journal. You can even have a gratitude jar, you know, throughout the season. Uh, within the two weeks, you know, you can have your children write one thing down that you're grateful for today. Um, and just put that in the jar. And then maybe on January the 1st, open it up and read all the things that you 
have been grateful for in spite of, in lieu of, you know, um, this very different looking holiday season. I know my own daughter, because um, I have young adults, uh, she's in her mid-20s and she was having uh, a challenge, you know, through uh, the pandemic and she started a gratitude journal and it really um, helped her. And uh, so if you're not a writer, you can even do it orally as well. You know, name for yourself as you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed at night. What is one thing that I'm grateful for uh, within this day? And remember that nothing is too small. So it may just simply be, you know, I'm thankful, um, you know, that uh, that I I have great lung capacity, um, that I've been able to do a hike up a really high hill today. Um, it may be that I'm just really thankful that I'm in good health and my muscles are working well. Uh, it can be very, very simple things. Another way of uh, exercising gratitude and that gratitude muscle in your life as well is simply to write a thank you note to someone else or as I call them, letters of affirmation as well. And it's something that I love doing in my ministry. And it really helps me a lot, so I know it will you as well. But you can think about um, recognizing someone within your life, you know, who's been a great um, friend or guide or support to you. And it can be something very simple as well uh, that you're thankful for. But, you know, you've noticed it. And it makes, of course, the recipient feel much better, you know, that, oh, my goodness, you know, someone actually sees what I'm doing, even though I'm working in the background and so on and so forth. Um, but it makes the recipient feel better, and it also makes you feel better as well, because you think, I'm going to make someone smile today, and I'm going to do something important for them and significant for them. You know, one of the, the most wonderful things I ever received in my ministry was um, I was working with someone who happened to be in palliative care. And before she passed away, she wrote me this incredible thank you letter. And she had her husband mail it after she had passed away so that I would receive this letter from her after the funeral was over. And it was an amazing gift, and uh, I've kept it to this day. So a lot of those very simple little things, a few words strewn together on a piece of paper in thanks for somebody else can have a huge impact on someone's life. And again, it will help you be at peace too. And then finally, I would say, you know, back to meditation as well. Um, you can do a body scan too, um, looking over your body, giving thanks for its parts, acknowledging it. And there's lots of body scans on the internet as well. You can find uh, lots of programs on YouTube and, um, and use those for meditation as well. So in terms of, you know, the whole process of surviving season, the season of 2020, if you are, like myself, happen to be separated from your children this year, if you happen to be separated from your parents, uh, your siblings, your grandparents, your extended family, and there's no way that you can get back to Canada or there's no way that those family members can get over here this year, then really the steps um, to go through and to help us, each of us, uh, would be simply name the losses. Name in particular the things that you're going to miss this year. Be very specific. Like I said, don't just say, oh, well, 2020 sucks. You know, just say in particular, what are the things that you're going to miss over the holiday season? And then think about improving uh, where you're at today after you've accepted the fact that, okay, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be stuck in this geographic location. Now what? Um, after you've accepted it, think about the ways in which you can improve that situation with all kinds of different distraction ideas and ways to communicate with family who are at a distance. And also think about the things that you can be grateful for at this time of the year as well. 
and be very specific about those too, because that will help you refocus and reframe the season. And do know that it won't last forever. And give yourself a lot of positive, self-affirming talk at this time of the year. So for us, um, do know that um, of all the military people, the Padres are always on call 24-7. So there's always someone at the end of the telephone line um, if you need to chat or an email if you prefer writing. But we're available. We are available in different time periods. I have the early weeks of December. Uh, Padre Moran is in the middle and Padre Floor holds up the last piece of the year. But there is always one of us available on call 24-7, any time of the day or night particularly if you're getting very low and you're finding yourself slipping into maybe some of the, the bad or behaviors or patterns in your life and you think to yourself, this has got to stop and I've got to pick myself up. What am I going to do? Where do I start? You know, give us a call. Everything is confidential and we can help you and support you and get you back on your two feet again. So that's the session for tonight. Thank you very much for those of you who have listened. And uh, I wish you a wonderful holiday season. And do know that uh, your chaplains are available for you at any time. Thank you and good night.